one thread that connected the suspects to the victims here, and it's a community that's known as the furry community. I don't plan to contest the charges. I know why I'm here. I deserve to be here. And I want to clear the air and say that, for the record, I am a zoophile. In the age of the internet, you can discover almost anything online, from meeting new friends to creating communities. It's no surprise there's a community for every interest, no matter how unusual. But not all communities are liked by everyone. The furry community is often one that gets talked about. That's because we're always hearing stories about its dark side. But what does that really mean? A furry's true identity. What is a furry exactly? We've seen the costumes, we've heard the stories, but what makes someone an actual member of the furry fandom? Furries are people who have an interest in anthropomorphism, which refers to giving human characteristics to animals. Their fursonas, a mix of the words furry and persona, allows them to have other identities that they use to represent themselves in the community. It can either be a version of themselves or a completely different character that they roleplay as. A lot of the time, furries can be seen wearing costumes of their fursonas, which are called fursuits. But not not every furry needs a fursuit. Some use virtual avatars that look like their fursonas, while others commission artists for original artwork for their characters. I use my, my fursona as an avatar on online interactions, and yeah. that's about all it is to me, mostly. Yeah. And then there are the people who identify very strongly spiritually with the creature they have made their avatar to be. It's more than just role play. These fursonas are used in any furry-related setting, like social media, chat rooms, video games, or in real-life environments like in-person media. Meetups. Furries have long since been a controversial community on the internet. Most people don't like furries and think negatively of them. But why do these negative ideas exist? Well, some members of the furry fandom take their interest in animals a bit too far. Because furries like this one we're about to talk about are why the community has a bad reputation. And the deeper we go into the video, the darker these bad apples get. The most disturbing fursuit creators. When you think of a furry, you probably think of a fursuit. These head-to-toe costumes are the easiest way to identify a member of the furry fandom. But they aren't just elaborate, they're also extremely expensive. Just a headpiece alone can cost up to $2,500, and making an entire fursuit can range from $6,000 to $7,000. And the simplest fursuits made up of the lowest quality materials can cost around $2,000. This is why many members of the furry community try to get alternative sources to get more affordable fursuits suits, like buying from less reputable sellers or searching for secondhand fursuits on online marketplaces. But unfortunately, some of these costumes are scams. Even after paying in full, you might not get the costume you ordered. This happens because some of these fursuit sellers don't keep their promises and just want to take your money without giving you the costume. Haruta Hyena is a furry who was exposed for scamming other community members through their resales. In their now deleted Instagram, they posted a photo of their fursuit, which was made for a fursona called Cypress. In the post, Haruta wrote that they had originally bought the fursuit for $7,000. And now they were reselling it for $10,000 since they included additional components, art, and accessories in the sale. But things weren't adding up. In the caption, they claimed that the original piece was $7,000. But in a video on their TikTok page, they showed the Facebook Marketplace listing for the suit priced at just under $5,000. Already, Haruta Hyena was lying to their audience in an attempt to up the price of the fursuit. They claim that they paid $7,000 for it despite a TikTok of them showing that the sales post was actually just under 5k. So they're actually upselling this suit for almost $5,000. And to make matters worse, Haruta would sometimes request more money. They would explain that they were going through hard times and urgently needed financial assistance. In some examples, Haruta mentioned being in a car accident that required expensive repairs or needed costly x-rays and treatments for their injured dog. Despite all these personal emergencies, there was never any real proof. Even after receiving the full $10,000 for the fursuit, plus the additional payments, Haruta Hyena repeatedly showed screenshots of a negative bank balance. All this was happening while they still owned the suit and had not shipped it out yet. One of the main reasons why they hadn't shipped it out was because of the cost. Since the suit was life-sized, it cost around $200 to send it. And under Haruta Hyena's conditions, Haruta just couldn't afford to send it to the buyer. But while they were going back and forth begging for more money, Haruta was flying out to different cities to attend conventions. More and more holes were being poked through Haruta Hyena's story. So much fluff and they can't even verify just to justify keeping this person's money. They have the goal to say that they don't want this blown out of proportion. $16,000. 
dollars. They don't want blown out of proportion. Another known scammer is the fursuit creator brand by the name of Sugar and Spice, who also followed the same tactics. Like Haruta Hyena, Alice, the person behind the brand, would tell her customers that she was dealing with a bunch of back-to-back -back personal problems. She would say her medication caused her to have memory loss, which is why suits weren't shipped out for weeks, months, or even years after they were ordered. Alice would even beg for pity from customers by saying she was too in pain to work and she felt forced and threatened when they'd ask for regular updates on the suit. They paid her over $3,000 for and haven't heard anything about in years. But Sugar and Spice would always take it one step further. On her Twitter, she would regularly advertise emergency commissions or sales. These rush jobs were supposed to be completed quickly because she was being paid in advance. These tweets would usually claim that Alice and her partner needed money quickly for situations like medical emergencies or sudden bill payments. In one instance, Sugar and Spice even used the illness of someone else's pet. She claimed that all the sales would go towards Alice's friend's sick cat, but that wasn't the case at all. The friend didn't end up getting any money for vet bills, and Sugar and Spice was able to sell a bunch of their products. With all of these questionable stories out there about fursuit sellers, many members of the fandom have ended up making their own fursuits themselves. But while some suits might not look the best, others look absolutely disgusting, and not because of poor craftsmanship, but for more vile reasons. This is Shadow Wolfess, an infamous fursuit creator within the furry fandom. At first glance, it does look a little creepy. With its worn out fur and mismatched material, it kind of looks like something out of a horror movie. But what's even worse is that the suit smells much worse than it looks. Shadow Wolfess, also known as Bill Clark, has been infamously called Carpet Sample because his fursuit creation looks like a mishmash of different carpet samples. At the time of this video, he is 67 years old. And back when he was an active part of the furry community, he was in his late 50s to early 60s. He was a furry in every sense of the word. He roleplayed, went to conventions, and he even took commissions for fan art and for fursuits. But no matter how low your budget is, I doubt that anyone would want to get a fursuit from him since he's also known as one of the most disgusting fursuit creators to ever exist. If you take a look at his fursuit, it's obvious that the material is from all sorts of places. It's all different colors, fabrics, and textures. This wasn't because Bill was a diehard recycler. The materials weren't just reused, they were soiled. Described as a sickening beast, the worst and most disgusting fursuit ever, and that is because his fursuit is produced using the leftover material from plush toys he has with. Bill was attracted to stuffed animals in an inappropriate way. And when he was done playing with the stuffed animals, he would take the fur from these plushies and repurpose them as material for his fursuit. Naturally, the fur started to smell and was never once clean. Now, much to the horror of other furries in the fandom, Bill didn't want to keep his passion project to himself. Shadow Wolfess was proud of his creation and wanted to share it with the world. He would regularly go to in-person conventions wearing this fursuit, and the awful stench coming from it couldn't be ignored. But his passion for plushies wasn't his only weird interest. He was also an artist who regularly posted his work online and accepted commissions. That meant that he spent a lot of time on the art sharing site DeviantArt, where he regularly engaged with inappropriate drawings of furry characters. His long list of questionable actions made Bill one of the most infamous furry in the fandom, but his odd activities didn't stop there. Outside of his furry hobbies, Bill was also a dog walker on the side, but unfortunately for the owners of those pets, they picked the worst person to trust, and I'll leave it at that. But while Bill's hobbies might be unnerving to hear about, he's not alone in the community. Furries in the virtual world. Our deep dive into the furry community exposes the darker, riskier aspects of online spaces. It's a clear reminder of why we need to protect our digital lives. This is where this video sponsor, Internext, comes in. Internext is a cloud storage service based on absolute privacy and security. It's open source, fully end-to-end -end encrypted, and zero knowledge. You can verify their code anytime on GitHub. Internext ensures that whatever you store online, whether photos of your pet or important files, they are secure and accessible only to you. Your data is protected from prying eyes. My friends, this is why Internext is different. They offer three main services, Drive, Photos, and Send. You can upload and download your files on the go with their Android and iOS apps, which also offer automatic photo uploads. With desktop clients for Linux, Mac OS, and Windows, you can seamlessly integrate Internext into your daily life. To try it out yourself, click my link below and get an exclusive 50% discount on Internext's lifetime plans. By lifetime, they literally mean one payment for life, which is unheard of in the age of subscriptions. The discount is only available through my link. You can also try Internext's free plan of 10 gigabytes.
Like most fandoms, the furry community uses the internet as a way to interact with each other without limits. And as we already know, that's also where bad people can find their prey. In the furry fandom, this is no exception. Since many of the members of the community aren't able to attend real life meetups, a lot of them turn to video games like VRChat to connect with other furries. VRChat is a chat room based social game that lets players use avatars, voice chat, and body motions to interact with other players. Players can join public servers called worlds or create their own where only their friends can enter. For those furries on a budget, VRChat is a great way to show off their persona without needing a fursuit, since players can commission custom avatars that they use to represent themselves in-game. Even though VRChat has an age rating of 13+, the game has actually got a bit of reputation for being the go-to for inappropriate roleplay. That's because in VRChat, you're able to connect a virtual reality headset and sensors. That way, your virtual avatar can directly mimic the actions that you're doing in real life. This is called ERP which has become a common thing on VRChat. People openly pursue these relationships without knowing all the important details about the other party, including their age. Since there's no accurate way to verify a person's age, it's made VRChat unsafe for some younger players. There's always been a kind of divide in the furry community about whether or not younger members should have as much access to the fandom as they do. Although a lot of furries are not in the community for disgusting reasons, there's no denying that some are. And sometimes these specific furries are way too public about it, especially on VR chat. One particular VR chat world has become infamous among the furry community. It's called Frenny's Nightclub, which is a nightclub themed server based on an NSFW fan made game of Five Nights at Freddy's. Considering the nature of the game, it's not surprising that a lot of people who join Frenny's Nightclub would have their own motives. When you first enter the chat room, there's a long list of rules that clearly says that ERP isn't allowed in public. However, these rules aren't always followed. When you load in, one of the first things you see is the avatars of the other players. A lot of them are wearing minimal clothing. One of the server's frequent visitors is Red. In Red's bio, they confidently state that they are a furry. But Red spends a lot of time with younger furries on the server and even adds them as friends. I have literally every age on my friends list as long as they're above the age of 13. Red is 24. And the avatar that Red uses is not appropriate to say the least. And a lot of younger players in general have started to use these types of avatars themselves themselves, which is a huge problem. But outside of VRChat, things aren't looking too great either, because there's another platform that's been known to have more than a few controversies within the furry community. The Cub Community. If people are making inappropriate furry avatars, then art will practically follow. But instead of sharing this sort of art in private messages, a lot of these artists like to post them online, specifically on DeviantArt. Furries are big on original artwork, with many of them commissioning artists to draw pictures of their fursonas to use as their profile pictures or avatars for their content. Like any fandom, inappropriate art is inevitable. And there are plenty of artists that draw this type of furry art. But to make matters worse, some draw this sort of thing with younger animals. This is called cub content. And the furry fandom has had its mixed opinions about it for as long as it's existed. On one hand, these are animals, but at the same time, there's still young ones that are being shown in unfitting ways. But even with all the controversy, it's a type of art that thrives on DeviantArt. And all of that becomes even more disturbing when you realize what some people on the site are actually doing. Aaron Thomas Usury was a member of the furry community that actively posted on DeviantArt. He drew pictures of his fursona, Zell the Wolf, with other members members of the fandom usually engaging in questionable scenarios. But for Aaron, DeviantArt wasn't just a place to show off his creativity. It was also a place to meet others. And soon, Aaron befriended two people from the site who were huge fans of his work. At some point in September of 2014, Zell the Wolf found himself becoming considerably close with two 12-year-old girls that he met on the DeviantArt website. And with Aaron being 21, this was not okay. The relationship between Aaron and the two younger furries went on for months before one of their parents eventually found out and of course demanded justice. The relationship ended in February of 2015 with an investigation starting in March of 2016. They contacted the local police in Overland Park, Kansas and shared details about their daughter's relationship with Aaron. Through this investigation, they were able to see exactly what Aaron had sent their daughter over the years and it was revolting. It wasn't long before Usury started sending and receiving pictures and then video leading to a laundry list of sickening charges. I don't plan to contest the charges. I know why I'm here, I deserve to be here. He was sentenced to be in jail for the next 17 years. Although Zelda Wolf was eventually punished for his crimes, there's still a ton of people like him hiding in plain sight. The horrors of Zoo. 
Over the years, the furry community has had to deal with a ton of people who have an attraction to animals. People who take their love of animals to an entirely different level. And many of the furry community absolutely dislike this side of the community and don't even consider them furries at all. These individuals are known as zoophiles. And if Zell the Wolf's case hasn't told you enough, you wouldn't want your pet near them. Arguably, one of the most infamous zoos on the internet is hypnotist Sappho, aka Valerie. She was known for not only her excessive interest in animals, but also for her controversial I am a zoo video. And I want to clear the air and say that for the record, I am a zoophile. Before his scandal, Sappho was a hypnotist who would teach hypnotism lessons to other furries in VR chat. She would then record these classes and upload them to her YouTube channel, which she started in September 2015. Some of these videos had tens of thousands of views and she regularly had people signing up for her group sessions. But while all this seemed harmless enough, that wasn't the root of all her problems. She also had a Discord server for her subscribers. It was called Mama Sappho's Hypnotherapy and was a place for those interested in her content and her hypnotism. This by itself was pretty normal, but the stuff she posted on that server wasn't. Although a lot of her fan base was young, Valerie had channels that would be filled with inappropriate drawings of animals on her server. In public voice chats, the conversation between members of the server would always toe the line between safer work and not. No one caught wind of what was happening in her Discord until one of her very own staff members, Matcha T Tiger, posted a twit longer outlining Sappho for her problematic ways. The post began with Matcha expressing their disagreement with the presence of young people in the server, considering the nature of Sappho's content in the Discord. And sometimes Sappho's hypnosis sessions would go too far. In the twit longer, Matcha tells everyone that they started feeling uncomfortable with the server when a specific channel was created which had questionable photos of animals and humans. But what really stuck with them was some of the words that Sappho said. They distinctly remember Sappho mentioning something along the lines of zoos are misunderstood. And Matcha had some questions. When they confronted Sappho about the comment, the YouTuber doubled down, saying that she believed being attracted to animals wasn't wrong. And that's when things started to completely crumble for hypnotist Sappho. Because rather than attempting to do damage control or deny the allegations, she went on to post a controversial video. On September 11, 2021, Valerie uploaded a video called Coming Out About Things, where she openly admitted that she was a zoo. Even after all the intense backlash from this video, Sappho was still proud of where she stood. She even helped found a nonprofit organization called Zoo Acceptance in North America, or ZNA. I am very happy and proud to announce that I am the chairman of the first zoo rights organization in the United States. Sappho claimed that ZNA was an IRS registered nonprofit, but people started finding holes in her story. She says ZNA is a 501c3 organization, yet this would be impossible as that type of organization needs to exist for three years in order to be even considered by the IRS as a nonprofit after registration. Throughout all this, Sappho and her team at ZNA were openly accepting donations for those wanting to support their mission. And even though they only got a few bucks, it was still a scam nonetheless, considering that their claim of being officially registered was allegedly untrue. Rather than taking a step back from the community, it seemed like Sappho was going all in with her new cause. She even started to recruit younger furries by using a mommy persona, getting them to follow her every move. A child still does not have the mental capacity to go through with safely. Um, okay, so that, that very last part, I... I disagree with. She also made another Twitter account where she posted questionable animal content and often talked to younger fans. If that didn't make Valerie suspicious enough, in December of that same year, people accused her of having improper relationships with younger furries in her community. On December 19th, Kylo, a younger furry, made a post exposing Sappho for interactions with him. Rather than Sappho admitting her faults and seeking help, she ranted about how she fell in love with the wrong person, essentially blaming Kylo for his post, saying that he never loved or cared for her. Sappho was known to call herself mommy and act like a maternal figure to a lot of her fans. So that led her to form close bonds with several people that she shouldn't be talking to. The community also realized that Sappho had a long list of victims. And following all this, Sappho knew that there was no coming back. So she deleted all her Twitter accounts and her YouTube channel in January of 2022. Shortly after, Sappho would return to the internet with some shocking news. A statement would be posted on a website called Here Rests Hypnotist Sappho, 
She told the world that she was retiring from the furry fandom and was going to seek professional help. This website would explain that the Sappho brand was going to be dropped and that Sappho was just going to continue her life while getting therapy for her issues. Which surprisingly was a good sign. Some people truly believe that Valerie was embarking on the right path, putting everything behind her to start new. And when this particular Instagram story was posted a month later, that seemed to cement that. And in a shocking twist, on February the 20th, Sappho would make an Instagram post. This post would say that with some help, she had resolved her issues and was no longer a map or a zoo, saying that she in no way holds hate to any of the fans she encouraged into being Zuzo Maps, but suggests that they stop these acts and get therapy. But old habits die hard. Valerie seemed to return to the fandom just under a new alias, Valerie Sappho on X, and uses the username Pause on Hips. As of November 2022, she was seen openly admitting to being in a relationship with someone named Zachary. But after some time, a tweet on the account said that the trolling era was over and that this account was just someone else pretending to be Sappho. Whether this was just a cover-up by Valerie or if it was truly a troll, no one knows for sure. But for now, the hypnotist Sappho saga has come to a standstill. After all that, it's hard to believe that things could get even worse in the furry community, but it can. Because while all these furries are deranged and disturbing, these next few are literally dangerous to society. The most dangerous furries. These next few stories have long since made furries worry about their reputation with the general public. These atrocities combined with the already negative stereotypes of the furry fandom have made it difficult for many of them to defend the community. In 2014, chlorine gas filled the halls of a Chicago hotel with thousands of people having to flee for safety. Among these people were members of the furry community still dressed in their fursuits as they were evacuating the building. This happened during the annual Midwest Fur Fest convention. Otherwise, known as Anthrocon, the second largest in-person gathering of furry community members in the US. 19 people were affected directly by the gas becoming nauseous and dizzy. They had to be transported to local hospitals for treatment, with one of them having serious symptoms requiring a prolonged stay. Whether it was a furry who did this or a hater who took his dislike of the community to extreme levels, nothing has been confirmed. Although no one got truly hurt with an incident like this, things could have easily gone much worse. One thread that connected the suspects to the victims here and it's a community that's known as the furry community. In 2016, the furry community and the world were shocked when news broke about a gruesome case involving the passing of three people in Fullerton, California at the hands of enraged furries. The Yost family consisted of the mother, Jennifer Goodwill Yost, the father, Christopher Yost, and their three kids. The kids were ages six, nine, and the eldest was 17. The entire family was part of the furry community, with Jennifer being a mother figure to many members of the local furry group, SoCal Furs. The family would often go to conventions and furry meetups together, gathering with local members of the community. Caitlin Yost was the oldest sibling in the family and was a committed member of the furry community, even having her fursona called Daydream Foxwool. She would post pictures wearing fursuits, engage with the community on social media, and make plenty of friends in the fandom. Two of those friends were 21-year-old Joshua Acosta and 25-year-old Frank Felix, who grew close to Caitlin. However, her parents parents were not pleased by this friendship, especially the relationship between Caitlin and Frank, which was an eight-year age difference. The Yosts did not allow Felix to see their daughter, but Felix did not like that. And he, along with his friend Joshua, would then lash out, ending the lives of both the Yosts, leaving only their young children behind and taking Caitlin with them. What's probably the most bone-chilling part of this case is that the Yosts had a relationship with the suspects. They had met them at conventions and were even friends with them before Frank Frank took a liking to their daughter, but this friendship ultimately led to their demise. And the latest story happened just last year in 2022. Benjamin Jeffrey Smith, who went by the fursona Polybun or Polyhead, was a known member of the furry community that concerned a lot of people with his bizarre behavior. Members of the furry community reported his questionable behavior time and time again in the form of tips to the police, which even led to the FBI contacting him in 2021, but nothing came of this investigation. Just months after the FBI contacted him in February 19, 2022, Benjamin would have a violent outburst in Portland's Normandale Park, landing six innocent people from a protest to a hospital. One person lost their life while another became paralyzed. The terrifying part is that these warnings to the police and FBI have been sent from as early as 2006. They continued to be sent over the years, but no case was built up against him, which could have prevented this tragic accident. He's now sentenced to life in prison. 
We all want to be part of a community. Make sure that you're holding others accountable for their actions because it may just protect the people we care about most. Visual Venture. Wait, before you go, please click this playlist right here to watch more dark internet documentaries because the algorithm is going to promote my channel more if you guys watch multiple videos and it would mean the world to me. Thank you so much and have a beautiful day. Peace.